I'm gonna put it like this, Rock. I'm not prepared to give the crown to the white boy, man. The white boy. No, we not. We not prepared. We not prepared to give the crown to the white boy. But let me explain give something. To you. In, 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 in the history, in the history of hip hop, there's always a person that comes out and just supersedes his situation. Like, like, like. But he has a, he has a good, he has a good history. He's with, he was with the outsiders. He was a battle rapper. Rock, he was a battle rapper. No, no, you know what? No, no, he's he's you know what? I'm gonna say it like this. He's he's the goat of his culture. He's the goat of his culture. Like Jay, like Jay is the goat. Like like Jay holds the goat of our culture. Like Jay holds the goat of our culture. LL holds the goat of our culture. Like Eminem, Eminem has a has a has a great platform where which displays why he's who he is. He's just, he's just like the dude's favorite rappers are black rappers. Like his, his favorite rappers is Red Man, Biggie, Dre 3000. Like he comes from a, a good, a good uh, portfolio. Like his portfolio just makes, and then when he's on records with niggas, dead wrong, Renegade, mm, all these wrong. other records, he just, he just shows, he just shows, he doesn't show you that he doesn't try to front on them. He doesn't try to like, battled him to be better. He just shows you that he's studying. He studied Slick Rick. The Marshall Mathers versus Slim Shady. That was Slick Rick. The the Red Man versus Reggie Noble. Like he 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 displays his portfolio shows you that he studied hip hop at its fullest. You know what I'm saying? So it's not to say that he's the GOAT of all time, but I think in, in his in his portfolio, he's he's he got a immaculate portfolio, man. Hey Rock what up, YouTube? It's Coffee tapping back in with another one, y'all. You guys heard that little clip there, man. So y'all know the way uh, Wack 100, you know, how he's now known as Clubhouse 100. You know what I mean? How he stays every day on the Clubhouse app, tapping in on all the different topics going on, joining different rooms and whatnot. Like, you know, it is what it is. As I always point out, like, like or dislike whack 100 he's very strategic about the way he moves but that's a whole nother uh you know discussion that we've had before we'll have again on this platform y'all know how that goes but anyways um uh, whack 100 hitting the headlines here uh that was a small clip from this listening session regarding eminem and you heard the individual uh there uh, giving Eminem praise, talking about, you know, how M just is a, is a student of hip hop. He's not ready to give the white boy the crown, but he's definitely ready to give him a lot of props. He's not the GOAT, but he is one of the GOATs. And, you know, he respects his portfolio the way he was a student of the game. Um, you know, we've heard people bring this up many times. He didn't say Tretch there, but we've heard Eminem mention Tretch a lot. And a lot of people have you know, recognize uh, Tretch's flow patterns and whatnot in Eminem's, uh, the way he, you know, spits his flows and whatnot. And it was interesting to hear him, too, say how, you know, like Marshall Mathers versus Slim Shady or Eminem versus Slim Shady, you know, in his um, opinion, he kind of felt that was like, you know, how Slick Rick, the ruler, did that. You know what I mean? And, you know, he mentioned the outsiders uh, and, you know, for those who were not aware of Eminem's involvement with the legendary outsiders, you know, we covered that last year with the, the whole as is situation with side conversation. Y'all um, we're in January, you know, as is is kept saying January 20th is coming again this year. It's going to be an annual event. So I don't know. We'll have to wait and see what what happens with all that. But, um, you know, Red Man, um, obviously just had a lot of uh connections to brick city to say the least you know a lot of people say on um what well, eminem was track was every said at the laundry mat hanging at the laundry mat hypochondriac hanging at the laundry mat where all the raunchy fat white trashy blondes be at um you know that the, there's word that that is uh you know connected to the outsiders that bar was inspired by how he used to hang at the laundromat with the outsiders out there in new York. and um i guess their names are are tagged at that laundromat i don't know exactly where it's at anyone from brick city who sees this video hit the comments um 
You know what I mean? I, and let me know if y'all are aware of what I'm talking about. I've heard that straight from people connected right to the outsiders. You know what I mean? But anyways, um, a couple other individuals in here were giving uh, praise to Eminem. Stat Quo and Wack 100 were definitely giving them high praise, high props. But you know Benzino had to jump up in there. Hit the comments and let me know if y'all listen to this whole Clubhouse episode featuring Clubhouse 100. Benzino was hot about it. Um, I guess they played, they were talking about they wanted to listen to M's first album, Infinite, which is, I don't know, like, I'm not going to say it's whack, but it's not the Eminem we know today. Infinite is definitely not the Eminem we know today at all. You know what I mean? Um, it, it, a lot of people compare it to like an AZ type flow. But people is what uh, Stat Quo had to say. Y'all know Stat Quo's name just recently came up with this whole Lil Xan situation. We got a video update coming on that in a little bit. You know what I mean? Lil Xan uh, trying to throw his whole drug addiction on Stat Quo. That's a whole nother story. Like I said, we'll cover that in a little bit. But um, peep what uh, Stat Quo had to say about Eminem. As we know, Stat Quo was on Shady Records. He said, listen. Let me tell you something. I love Biggie. I love Jay-Z. I'm from Atlanta and I love Andre 3000. But you got to understand this is a white boy coming into a lack dominant culture and he got the respect from us. We respect him lyrically. And right now, if he puts out an album, he going to sell the same amount of records as all your favorite artists that's popping right now. Every time he drops that ish sells millions when debating greatest, I understand some of you want to say no to him, but Eminem is one of the goats. And that was um, that was Stat Quote, like I said. And uh, WAC 100 agreed with Stat, but like I said, Benzino was in there still, still salty. A lot of people don't know, like, you know, Benzino reemerged in the news headlines last year about Eminem. But, um, you know, and he's back at it, dissing Eminem and everything. But a lot of people do not know that Benzino um, got like Doc Hicks. Go check out Doc Hicks' video um, where Benzino was totally up off this in Eminem. Like he he totally got away from that, apologized, wanted to have a conversation with him, and then jumped back into this. And I don't know, man. Benzino, I guess uh, someone could convict, consider him to be a confused type cat. I don't know. Y'all let me know what you guys think in the comments. Then this was uh, funny to me, man. Y'all know I'm Bills Mafia if you rock with coffee and Stefan Diggs, the best receiver in the NFL. Y'all know what it is. Um, we going to get that Super Bowl ring. I'm confident. I can't wait. Uh, we're closing out the season up against the New York Jets uh, this weekend. But anyways, you see Stefan Diggs got his car. Uh, with, or he, I guess he didn't do it, but his Ferrari, you see that white Ferrari is clean, got caught up in the snow out on the west side at a Tim Hortons. Yo, y'all know I'm Jay Coffee Talk. Y'all know I love my coffee. Comment if you know about Tim Hortons. I'm not going to elaborate too much more, but it's the best coffee on earth. If y'all ain't never had Tim Hortons, I feel bad for you. You know what I mean? But anyways, um, you see Stefan Diggs, like this thing went viral on Twitter and Diggs had to let everyone know, yo, I wasn't even the one driving. I was at practice. But come on, man, you can't drive a Ferrari in the snow. Like a lot of people, if you don't live in like a place like Buffalo, uh, Detroit, like Michigan, Wisconsin, like in Green Bay, South Bend, Indiana, Cleveland, somewhere with lake effect snow and all that, where like you really, really get hit at winter. You can't bring them kind of cars out in, in the snow in the winter. You know what I'm saying? Corvettes, Ferraris, or if you got a motorcycle, you can only use them joints like six months out the year. All right, y'all, and last up on the rundown uh, in the news on this video, this is crazy, you guys. Jump in the comments and let me know, know what you think. Now, listen, uh, Urban Meyer has been taking all kinds of L's. You know what I mean? He's getting caught cheating on his wife in the bar, groping women, um, kicking his kicker. Uh, just a big mess, and he got fired by the Jacksonville Jaguars. Like, his run in the NFL did not last long at all. Like, Chip Kelly beat you, bruh. Chip Kelly lasted longer than you, Urban. But um, anyways, this is some real crazy stuff here, okay? Um, what happened was it leaked out in the news um, recently that back when Urban Meyer was still coaching at Ohio State back in 2017, that there was a picture of Trayvon Martin. 
you know, um, obviously the, the, the picture that we've all seen of him wearing a hoodie, R.I.P. Trayvon Martin, George uh, Zimmerman, you're a sack of ish, a sack of garbage. And I stand on that still to this day. You deserve to be in prison. You murdering son of a bitch. But, um, you know, that that uh, picture that we've all seen reports leaked out through the media that that was used in an Ohio State uh, football meeting of like a no hoodie policy, which is just highly offensive, highly inappropriate. I'm not even going to go all in describing it. I mean, come on, guys, this is some fucked up ish, right? Urban Meyer denied it. He said, this is false. What are you talking about? This never happened. And um, since then, two players have spoke out about this uh, via their Twitter. One is Marcus Williamson, who um, I believe is still currently playing for Ohio State. He's a cornerback. And you see, he took to Twitter to say, it makes you wonder how much control do these institutions have over young black boys. My first team meeting, true story, 2017, this photo was presented to us via PowerPoint to institute our building wide rules of no hoods in the building. So like, that's just, like I said, just absurd and foul to, for that picture to be used. Uh, talking about no hoods, no hoodies, like just totally out of pocket and wrong. But like, we, like I said, Urban Meyer denied it. He said, yeah, we, we, um, we weren't allowed to, uh, or we had a no hoodie, no sunglasses policy because we wanted to make sure players were paying attention during the, the, um, you know, team meetings and whatnot. But that's no, hell no, we didn't use that picture. What are you talking about? And then uh, another, uh, I guess this guy's a former player, Tyvis Powell. He uh, did a little digging and it was confirmed that the pitcher was indeed. He says, got the information regarding the Trayvon Martin situation. It was presented in a freshman meeting regarding the no hoods in the building rule. Afterwards, it was pointed out how offensive it was to everybody. And the person in charge issued an apology and they accepted it. The players I've talked to said the person in charge was truly uneducated on that situation and really didn't have any idea the story behind the image. So Marcus isn't telling a lie about that. It was something that was handled in private. I still stand on my racial st stance of OSU. So a few players, um, you know, have took like had the back like supported urban meyer and the football program there that it is not racist um they're saying whoever used that photo was uneducated on the story but like i don't buy that i don't buy that at all like how the hell does like you know what i mean if you if you didn't even know about what happened to trayvon martin once again i ride p to him thoughts out to his family um like come on I'm just not buying that, that you live in this country and you were unaware of that. Like, how did you end up using that picture? Come on. You know what I mean? And Urban Meyer has claimed, you know, he had no clue. He now, like I said, he denied it. Now he's saying, oh, I, OK, so it was used. I, I was unaware of that. But come on, man, you were the head coach of the, the football program. You knew what was going on. Stop it. Like, quit lying. You know what I mean? But um, I don't know. Uh, based on. What we're hearing the players say and and what was said in there, it sounds like this was someone did this. Whoever did it was out of pocket. I, I feel like Urban Meyer bears some responsibility being that he was the head of this program. You know what I mean? But it seems like like they said, this was something that was like handled in private and they tried to um, kind of cover up that this happened. And now that it leaked out to the media, Urban Meyer tries to deny it. Um, some digging gets done. It's confirmed that it was true. But um, I don't know, you know, uh, the players, uh, uh, not all the players, but the players that sp spoke out to the media have supported Urban Meyer and the football program there. So I don't know. Hit the comments and let me know your thoughts on that as well as these other topics we covered on here. Like I said, though, that that's just very weird, very offensive, um, you know, like just wrong that 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 photo was used. But um, let's talk about all these topics in the comments. Make sure to sub to the channel. Stay tuned. Daily content dropping. You know how we do it over here on J Coffee Talk. We talk music, news, sports, and more. I'm out of here, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.